What's up, everybody? I got four NBA player props for you guys to hammer for today's NBA betting slate. We're talking Wednesday, November 15th. We got eight games on the NBA docket, and I have four player props for you guys to hammer. Now, I will admit this NBA season has been hit or miss for me so far. I started the season really hot. Then I had a cold streak. Then I had a couple hot days in a row. Now I'm currently in a cold streak, which continued yesterday. I gave out another four picks on this YouTube channel. I only got one of those four to cash. We end the day down two units. Of those three that missed, I pumped up the player's point total, and they didn't even hit their main line. So just the incorrect reads across the board on those three plays. That brings our total uh, results on the season to now back down a slight 0.75 units. So we've been hovering around mediocrity basically since that hot streak. And I will say one thing I do want to point out is I started off the season giving out very, very plus money plays, like plus 300 and above. So don't let the win record fool you. Obviously, the total profit slash loss is what you really want to focus on. But moving forward, I'm going to go a little bit safer with these props, and I'm not going to pump up every single play. I, I have had a lot more success taking unders or taking main lines. So I'm going to try that out for a little bit and hope that I can get into a rhythm. So if you want to follow, follow along in the journey, would appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. And then for this video, you can like it, comment, and let me know your thoughts as well. If you're riding, if you are fading, whatever it may be, I love hearing the comments and uh, responding to them. But we can get into today's picks. So again, I have four. The first one we are going to lock in here is in the Kings versus Lakers game. And we're taking De'Aaron Fox over two and a half made three pointers, plus 165 odds at FanDuel. So Fox has only played in four games this year because he sprained his ankle and he missed a little bit over a week. But he has been pretty good in those four games. And that includes uh, shooting from deep as well. He said at least three pointers in two of four games so far. So 50% hit rate is good when you're taking something at plus money. And one of those two games that he missed was his most recent game, which was his first game back on the year against the Cavaliers, who do have a good defense. He only shot two of six in that game, and those six three-point attempts are the fewest he has attempted so far this year. Granted, tiny sample size, only three games prior to that, but still, it was his first game back. You can kind of understand him getting his legs ahead of, or his legs under him. Looking at his career, Fox has turned himself into a pretty good shooter. When you consider when he came out of Kentucky, that was his weakness. He's turned himself again into a pretty good shooter. In the four games so far this year, he's averaging seven and a half attempts from deep. And the most recent game was the only game in which he attempted fewer than seven. He had games this year against the Warriors where he attempted nine and made five. Against the Lakers, which is the matchup he is playing tonight, he attempted eight and made three. So those were the two games that he went over. Love that type of output, those types of attempts from deep. And even dating back to last year, this obviously does include the playoffs. He has made three or more three-pointers in six of his last nine games. Six for nine, that's very nice. Love that streak for us as well. And then looking at the Lakers, they give up. They do give up a decent amount of three-pointers. They're not like the worst in the league, but they're definitely below average. They allow 37 and a half shots from deep, which is 23rd in the NBA. So for plus money, I do really like this one a lot as our first play. Next up in the Magic versus Bulls game, we're taking an under. We're taking Zach Levine under 26 and a half points. You can get this at both BetMGM and DraftKings at minus 110 odds. So I love, I absolutely love fading Zach Levine in this spot. For starters, he just hasn't been good. The Bulls haven't been good. Zach Levine hasn't been good. And now they're opening up trade talks with him. I don't know if that's going to make him want to perform better to show out for these teams. That I'm not sure of. But I, what I do know is that he has been brutal this year. I made the mistake of backing him on Monday. I'm hoping I can right that mistake today and not go 0 for 2 on Zach Levine. So this is a number 26 and a half points that he has only gone over once this year. And that was against the lowly Pistons. And in that game, he scored over 50. Outside of that, he has yet to go above 24 points. So he hasn't been playing well. He hasn't been scoring. Not only that, but it's a pretty brutal matchup as well against the Magic. The Magic sneakily have a pretty good defense. They allow the sixth fewest points per game at 107.9. And just looking at advanced stats, 
net rating has them as the fifth best defense in the NBA. I also like specifically the two teams playing each other in this matchup because both teams play at a pretty slow pace. So you don't project a ton of possessions in this one, which obviously limits scoring, limits everything like that. The Bulls play at the fourth slowest pace the Magic play at the 11th slowest. So one really slow team, one below average in terms of pace. I get it. Levine is always scary in that he could go on a heater, shoot six of 10 from deep, but that hasn't been the case at all this year. So I like him to go under 26 and a half points. It's a very positive EV play according to props.cash, which projects him to score closer to like 21 to 22 points in this one. So I do like it a lot as our second play. Next up, Celtics versus 76ers. We're taking Jason Tatum, 30 plus points, plus 160 odds at FanDuel. So this is a play that I am pumping up his over under. I think is 26 and a half or 27 and a half. We're taking him to get to 30 plus. Tatum has been awesome this year. The Celtics have played 10 games. He has scored 30 plus points in six of those 10 games. Now I know that the Sixers defense has been good. They are on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and they're missing a pretty key defender in Kelly Oubre, which is not something that you would have thought heading into the year, but Kelly Oubre has been pretty big for them. And I also like fading the most recent events that these two teams just played each other, and Tatum had his lowest, he had his worst game of the year by far. He had his uh, fewest points scored at 16. He had, his, he had his fewest shots attempted at 14. That's his lowest field goal attempts of the year. And he only attempted six from deep. That, um, that is his sex, sec, second lowest three-point attempts per game. And then he only made two, which is tied for the lowest. And it's not as though Tatum historically struggles against the Sixers either. It's not one of those matchups where the Sixers just have his number. We've seen plenty of times, including the playoffs, Jason Tatum absolutely destroy the Sixers. We're talking 50 points against them in game seven of the NBA playoffs last year. So just because the fact that he just went under against the Sixers, that actually makes me want to bet the opposite because I think the next time he's going to be a little bit more motivated. The Sixers obviously also beat the Celtics in that game as or in that game as well, uh, taking their first head-to-head -head matchup. So I think that Tatum is going to come out and shoot significantly more than he did last game. I also like, for what it's worth, his over three and a half made three pointers. That's also plus money. Obviously, we are just tracking whether he hits the points or not. But as a bonus, I do like his three-point attempts. That's our third pick of the evening. And fourth one, our fourth and final pick, also sticking with the Celtics versus 76ers. And I'm taking in Joel Embiid to go under 31.5 points, minus 109 odds at Caesars. So my last play of the evening is definitely the spiciest, but I like fading Embiid and taking him to go under 30 half, 31 and a half in this one. As good as Embiid has been this year, he could still. I still just like him to score fewer than 32 points. The thing is, I'm not telling you he's going to have a bad game. He could score 30, still have a great game. I just don't think he quite gets up to 32, which makes the under a play here. Embiid has gone over. Uh, he has gone over this number in four of his last five games so far this year. The one game in which he went under was against these Celtics. And unlike the Tatum situation, I do think that there is something to that. Throughout his career, the Celtics have been Joel Embiid's kryptonite. He has historically struggled against the Sixers. Now he, or excuse me, against the Celtics. Now he has had some good games against them. Not really any in the playoffs. They all come in the regular season, which obviously this game is a regular season as well. But generally, the Celtics have the, the bodies, just the big bodies, and Al Horford this year, Porzingis, is, is a great defender. They have the bodies that can uh, fluster and bead, and they also just have the general defensive structure as well. Even they put Drew Holiday on Embiid, and he struggled a little bit against them the last time they played. Overall, Embiid has only gone over this number in four of his last 11 games against the Celtics. That's dating back, back to last year, including the playoffs, including a couple games prior to the playoffs as well. This is also the second night of a back-to-back, -back, so he might not play his normal allotment of minutes. He played a season high literally last night against a law in a loss against the Pacers at 37.7 minutes, so he might not play as much as he normally does. And he also just might get the night off. If he does, this will be completely voided. No harm, no foul. So I do like fading and be taking him to go under 31 and a half points. 
as our fourth and final pick of this evening. Four picks for you guys to tail. Again, if you're riding with me, make sure to comment and let me know. Other than that, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff helps me out a ton. I appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.